Hello, Doris. Nice to be back. Hello, Monsignor Malabrecca. Thank you for having me today. And our topic for this month for our podcast is going to be on Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade. Yes. That's, that's a very hot topic. Very it? hot topic. Can I explain a little? Yes, please. All right. So most of you may know that um, this two Sundays ago, January 22nd, was the 50th anniversary of a Supreme Court case called Roe versus Wade. Roe is like John Doe, Jane Roe, so it's not the real person's name. There is a real person who had a conversion experience and changed her sides. Uh, so that's very interesting. But let's talk about what Roe v. Wade was. Back in 1973, 50 years ago, in 1973, almost in every state in the United States, abortion was illegal. It was illegal for those seeking abortion, and it was illegal for doctors to do abortion. There were some states that were very, quote-unquote, liberal that allowed it, but almost universally it was illegal. But Jane Roe, a young woman who was pregnant, wanted to get an abortion, and it went very quickly up to the Supreme Court. And no government but the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court, passed down a decision which said that there is a constitutional right for a woman to have an abortion up until the sixth month of pregnancy, and that no state or any federal government can make a law prohibiting abortion up to six months. This was astounding. It undid the laws in 48 states of the 50 states that were there. And uh, all of a sudden, abortion became legal, not because governments decided to, but because of this one court case. And even more interesting, it was a 5-4 decision of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So it was by only one vote that abortion became legal in every state in the United States. And this, therefore, led to a huge abortion industry in the United States mm -hmm. with governments, hospitals offering abortions, with groups like Planned Parenthood uh, uh, en enabling people to have abortions, and all of a sudden abortions which were in, the, there were a, legal, a lot of illegal abortions and that is a, certainly a big problem, the problem of illegal abortions and the danger of them. But there were, there were, those were in the thousands. By 1991, there were 1 1.6 million abortions a year in the United States. So the, uh, the amount of abortions, because they're legal, because they're available, because Medicaid paid for them, because many doctors encouraged women to have abortions, the number of abortions super grew in the United States. And... Also, the belief that because it's not illegal, it's also not immoral. Right. Because it's not illegal, it's not immoral. Right. Uh, but of course, there's lots of things that are immoral that are not illegal. A lot of them have to do with sexual matters. Uh, mm -hmm. there were, in the past, in the United States and in many countries, even sexual things were crimes. Uh, but this is not a sexual question, this is a question of life and death. Correct. And uh, very quickly, a, a large pro-life movement arose in the United States because of this, uh, because of opposition to abortion. And in fact, there has been a, a march on Washington uh, on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade every year for the last every 50 year. years. And I've seen even young adults such as my age go to Washington. Not even young adults. The, the, the march is overwhelmingly young. Yes. Overwhelmingly young. Pro-life. Yes. Pro-life. Yes. Yes. Uh, many Catholic schools are organized bus rides to, to, to the march on Washington. There were times when it's gone over 200,000 people doing that. Mm -hmm. So certainly abortion is a, a big problem in the United States. The pro-life people are very strong. And the quote-unquote pro-choice people are very strong in their convictions. But 
because of the change in the Supreme Court, uh, and you know, I'm I am I'm not really into politics, and I'm no great Trump supporter, but it is no doubt that because President Trump changed the makeup of the court, the court now uh, found that Roe v. Wade was mis was mis decided, okay. yeah. and there is no such thing as a constitutional right to abortion. It doesn't mean that abortion is forbidden. It means that every state has to have its own laws about abortion, like every state has its own laws about murder and, and about theft, theft and about education. education and everything. They have to make their own decisions about it, unless the federal government, of course, passes laws about abortion. But it looks like that's not likely. That's right not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Uh, it, it was really terrible for me living in a country which believed that its constitution said it's okay for a woman to kill her own child. Uh, that's an astounding thought to me, to think that, the, that we believed that there's a right to take your own life. And of course, a lot of this goes around questions of reproductive rights and women's rights and women's control of their own lives. And of course, the question is, is a child in a mother's womb the, the life of that woman or is it a separate life? Uh, and those of us who are pro-life certainly believe that a woman who is a mother um, has a very special relationship to her child and that a relationship of love and of care, mm -hmm. but that woman uh, that that child is not an extension of her body. It's a separate child. It's a separate yeah, it's a, it's definitely a human being. It's what it's also an interesting thing because uh, there's nothing scientific about three months or six months. The, the 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 Supreme Court in Roe v. Wade said that a child can be aborted up to the time of quote unquote viability, meaning that it could live on its own. But nobody can live on their own. There's not such thing as complete viability. A newborn baby uh, can't live on its own. Uh, the only scientific thing that happens that is different before and after is the moment of conception. From the moment of conception, there is a new human being being formed in the life of the mother. Also, it's, it's so terrible what this has done for women. It's it's a very sad pastoral problem. I, as a priest, have met many, many women who have had abortions and uh, confessed many, many women who confessed abortions. And uh, unless the woman cuts off her feelings completely, this goes against her own nature as a mother. Exactly. Her own nature as a mother. And as a woman, a young woman, what I've seen play out in society is that when a woman is able to do such an act, it's not because she wants to do it just to do it. It also leaves a burden on her, meaning it leaves her broken on the inside as well. You know, we have in our church a whole um, ministry called the Rachel Ministry mm -hmm. of praying with women who've had abortions to heal the scar, right. There is uh, a scar of that. abortion. And the statistics also show that women that abortion hurt women too. And the statistics show that women that have gone through abortion, they're more susceptible to commit suicide. Oh. Yeah. And sometimes has psychological problems as well. Meaning, after such an act, they're unable to go back to their normal life as if nothing ever happened. Because mm -hmm. there's an attachment to that child. Well, of course. There's an attachment. So um, only only God can heal uh, such a such an moment. Well, of course, God is an expert at healing. Yeah. Um, and. Uh... I certainly have a heart for women who have done this and would gladly help any woman who had an abortion look for God's forgiveness and peace. But uh, 
this constant thought that there's a right to do this and there's no problem with doing this and this is fine it's just a medical procedure it's not taking the life of a child all that falsehood has certainly hurt American society yes, deeply. definitely it has grieved us so much because you're not just hurting the person you're also hurting that family as well mm -hmm. you know and also and it, and it has a ripple effect but let's talk about the lack of education because for someone to say well it's one my body and two it's my choice and looking at it as a means to an end there seems to be a lack of um education meaning the the respect for life is missing there because if we remember how um beautiful when a mother finds out that she's about to conceive a child we would be that mom would probably embrace it but then there's also another dynamic that's playing out here um people that women that do perform an abortion is sometimes having financial problems or come from a broken home that's not as loving or will receive them and another part that plays into this is that the population that is performing these acts are mostly in college college students as well uh, so trying to um figure out how you're going to put food on the table when that when that child is born sometimes forces the person to have an abortion and sometimes if there's a lack of love in the home uh that person may perform a, a, a i shouldn't say person that woman performs a, an abortion or sometimes they're in school and they can't see themselves coming back home with a child and saying, um, I can't finish school because now I have a child to... to sure, finish. so certainly the, the, the reality of abortion, mm -hmm. the growth of it has grown up in a time where our society has seen a number of enormous changes. And the, the enormous changes are, number one, the great amount of sexual activity among young people. Mm -hmm. There's always been a problem with sexual integration and sexual morality, but we have never seen a society that is so promiscuous and so, mm -hmm. so because sexuality has become divorced from marital commitment and from openness to children. So that's one of the greatest changes that's happened in the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, the, of course, the availability of contraception uh, has separated sexual activity from childbearing. And number three, um, the whole issue of women in the workplace and the fact that so many women are seeking higher education, mm -hmm. uh, seeking higher professions, uh, very much high involved in the workforce and in, 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 in all this, making careers uh, that has led many women to desire their career and not desire uh, to be a mother and to be home with that. So all these are the, the, the feminist and liberation issues that resolve. It's why it's considered a right because it's thought that having abortion is part of the right of a woman doing progressing in the society. But it's a, it's almost like a lie because it's a lie. <laughs> it's, 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 a lie. it's it's or a, an imagination that really can't you're not really free you know because you're first of all women still haven't reached to the point where they make equal pay in the workplace right oh sure that's well, part of the struggle it's, <laughs> the, the, it's not yet where, where, where it should be where it should be so you know that putting my career first and you know that, that that's something that we tell ourselves but it's not leading to the truth you know, um, and yes, and media has played a very big part in pumping sexual uh, ideas into our children more and more these days, where they lead, where it leads them to have promiscuous sex at an earlier age, and instead of thinking about um, family and marriage and and building a home. 
So um, media also plays a part in media this. Media well. plays an enormous yeah. part yeah. You know. because the media certainly is overwhelmingly pro-abortion. Yes. Uh, uh, and the Democrats, mm -hmm. strangely, uh, it's almost as if you have to be pro-choice in order to be a Democrat, mm -hmm. uh, making all the other issues uh, difficult to see clearly because right. of the insistence that it be a pro-choice party. Uh, you know, that every once in a while you see in the paper some Democrats who want to be pro-life Democrats, but they're very isolated. Yeah. Uh, what I have heard somebody say this, I didn't leave the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party left me yes. because the, the embrace, uh, embracing the agenda of abortion rights has certainly marked the Democratic Party in the last 50 years and makes it not just a moral issue because abortion is a moral issue. It's what's right and what's wrong, what's correct, what's good, uh, but it's also a very political issue. Definitely. So with, 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 the Christian life being that we want to help people be connected with God and no matter what happens in their life, meaning you become a mom at an early age, um, to embrace that life, right? We want them to embrace that life. We want them to not seek that as a solution, but to seek God as a solution. <laughs> A very young teenage girl in my parish, she was in one of our confirmation programs, mm -hmm. got pregnant while she was very young. She was only 16. And uh, we just recently did the baptism of the baby, and the father, oh, she's now 17, and, and the father is 17. And uh, she was very strong. She was very strong. Uh, she's going to school, she's being, she's being home tutored by, by, on Zoom. And she's taking care of her baby, and I'm very proud of her. I'm very proud of her. She's uh, doing the right thing. So you can, you can. I wouldn't say lost her way because you know, every every child is a blessing, and they're here at a time that God planned for them to be here. But what I'm trying to say is, you can continue your life while bringing this oh, child into this life. In fact, That's people have done it for thousands and thousands of years. <laughs> I, I look around my parish, a lot of the elderly women here have one older child from their youth. Yeah. Right? And, you know, lots of people do crazy things when they're yeah. young uh, and make life-changing decisions. Mm. But uh, removing a living child is not a correct decision. Mm. It's a, a moral tragedy. So, uh, of course, the pro-life, pro-choice problem has not gone away because of the change of Roe v. Wade, but of course, the, the overturning of Roe v. Wade has made an enormous change uh, on the American landscape. Yes. But uh, you speak about education. Education is a hard thing because public schools are very pro-choice. Public schools are very pro-choice. Uh, lots of things are being taught in public schools that are appalling, to a Christian moral point of view, and uh, it's a very difficult problem. Who is educating our Who is educating our children to make the right choices? We we, we make our attempts in religious education, but the the media and the educational system uh, needs to be educated itself in order to educate correctly. And. Um, Christian lifestyle, which means you know chastity, love of life, protection of the individual, mm -hmm. care, community, mm -hmm. uh, marriage, yes. family, mm -hmm. uh, all those things that are part of Christian moral life is certainly uh, threatened in American society in a way that it never was in the 200 mm -hmm. years of our existence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because, for example, when someone starts down that road, right, they start down that road, of seeing abortion as a means to end, what what avenue do they see for themselves? Because they constantly go through that cycle. They don't see themselves being loved, being cherished, um, being a, a mom or a dad. 
Well, it's, you know, everybody's different, and there's not just one type of person seeking abortion. Mm -hmm. uh, people have different experiences, depending how old they are, what their culture is, what their faith is, what their belief is. Yeah. Uh, but I do feel very bad for women who do abortions, but I, I have the overwhelming teaching that it's all fine, it's part of reproductive rights, is certainly wrong. You, you know, one of the most interesting things that happens with these things is the question of the ultrasound. Mm. Uh, some of the states uh, have passed laws that a woman who wants an abortion has to have an ultrasound first. Why? Because when you have an ultrasound, you see the baby inside of you. And when you, when you see the baby inside of you, you realize uh, what's inside of you. And the opposition to the ultrasound is because the pretense that it's not a baby is the pretense that it's not a baby. And we don't want to see the truth about it all. There's a lot of cover, there's a lot of denying the truth. Yes, yes. And then the ultrasound, you could also see the child's heart. You see the child's heart. That's the oh, truth the in that. Thing, yeah. The whole thing. So you spoke about earlier that our parish has a Rachel project. Not our parish, the diocese. The diocese, the diocese. has that. Yeah. yeah. And that, if someone were to be in a situation that they see themselves being a mom and they don't know what to do, they can reach out to that group and they would help them. Yeah, instead. usually they help post abortion. Okay. It's, it's a post abortion ministry. Okay. The, uh, you know, that uh, in the New York Archdiocese, they have founded a group of nuns called the Sisters of Life. And the Sisters of Life help many pregnant women get through their pregnancy. And they, they, they visited here several times. I've met them in Kings County Hospital encouraging young women uh, not to give up their babies there. Wonderful group of women. Okay. And I have done some research and I found that uh, there was an archbishop named John O'Connor. Oh, yeah. He yeah. was the one who founded the Sisters of Life. Okay. Okay. And he also founded, because of his uh, conviction of helping those helping people helping women not to have abortion uh stem the gabriel project right a whole bunch of projects in there yeah sciences. gabriel projects and there are some dioceses that uh participate in it so that young women you know women of all ages could bring their child into this world without feeling the stresses of you know being a mom you know help them through that process until they have their child it's a beautiful um project I think, in terms of helping women um, not using that as a, as a, using abortion as a tool and being able to bring their child into this world. Yeah. Mm. Um, like I said, the, the abortion question uh, goes along with other questions about sexual morality and family and marriage. Uh, I'm astounded about marriage, you know. I'm a priest 46 years. When I was a young priest in the 70s and 80s and even the 90s, mm -hmm. I used to do 200 marriages a year. I used to do That's all marriages, lot. marriages, That's marriages. Lot, I did yeah. marriages all the time. And last year I only did six. Uh, and it's not just wow. me as one priest. Uh, it's the universal experience of the how many people are not getting married, how many couples are not getting married. Hmm. Uh, the great resistance to the marriage commitment mm -hmm. and it has certainly debilitated uh, our families a great deal our great communities deal. our well. communities and our families mm -hmm. and uh, there's a the, the 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 millennial generation who's the ones who are not getting married mostly mm -hmm. uh, uh, need real Christian talking about the role of marriage in their lives and the lives of society because it is marital commitment and the giving of self that makes for solid things. Mm -hmm. Now also we've seen, I've seen so many, so many children being raised uh, where their parents are divided, you know, they don't, they, they spend one weekend with one father with the father and one weekend with the mother and one Tuesday and it's back and forth and back and forth and that has certainly had a very large impact on our society mm -hmm. these days too. So there again, the word education keeps coming back. Yeah, but who's educating? Right. right. 
because education nowadays means education in abortion rights and reproductive rights, mm -hmm. meaning the right to take the life of your child and the life it's okay if you don't get caught and uh, all that type of stuff. And the, the correct education should be is what, what is God's plan for your life? What is God's yes. plan for you? Yes. I was about to say it should be called re-education, mm -hmm. but that, that, that is a better way of saying it because even when a child is conceived and it's never you know you know no some children are planned some children are not but it it is part of god's plan for our lives you know to bring this child into this world and um you know many children were not planned mm -hmm. but uh parents learn to love their children even if they weren't planned right right great deal mm -hmm. uh, you learn to love the people in your life, but if the person is not there, you can't love them. Yeah. But parents can love their children. How many people do I know when the, their, their parents didn't expect them to come along? Mm -hmm. And the, when they came, their parents showered them with love. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in our society, the most powerful thing that makes people who are selfish become selfless is, what? is parenthood. When a woman or a man becomes a mother or a father, their lives are reoriented completely in caring for their child. Oh, because the priority People who are before live just for themselves mm -hmm. and their own pleasure, when they have a child, discover that they're living for someone else. Uh, there is nothing like parenthood to make a, a selfish person selfish. Uh, and... Uh, in the midst of that reality, and that's been the reality since the beginning of the human race, that young people live crazy, hedonistic <laughs> lives, but once they become parents, they're no longer focused on what they want and what they feel like and what they, how, what they can get away with. They're, they're focused on caring for their child. Uh, and because of abortion, uh, the young people stay children. That is true. And they don't become caretakers. Right, right, right. Um, they don't step into that. It's even amazing how many people get, get, get living together and avoid children altogether or say, I'm not going to have children until I get this done and that done and this done. And they're in their late 30s before they're thinking of having children. Mm -hmm. And it means that they're just living another type of life and they have not yet begun uh, giving their life for another person. There's nothing like parenthood mm -hmm. to make a selfish person selfish. Because you have to shower that person. You've got to, you have to reorient your whole life. Yeah. You have to change your whole it's life. It's a beautiful experience. It's a one that we, neither you or I have it. <laughs> no. But from, it's easy for us to talk. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> yes but from what, from what I've seen, you know, from my girlfriends, I've seen them, you know, come from, you know, college and then now they're parents. So it's to see them as you said, change, mm -hmm. change and, and care for their child is, is just amazing, you know, it's just amazing. And then, and, and then when a, when a young woman becomes a mom, they're not just a mom, they're just, they're, they're a person in society, you know, they're helping change laws, they're, they're helping pay taxes, they're, they're building a community, so when when you don't when a woman cannot step into that role of being a mom it kind of like takes away from the community as well because um if let's say a community has 10 women and eight out of the 10 decide not to have children um only two is left so how does that community start grow right how does that community grow how do we um put people into office that will um, make sure that the community continues to grow how do we you know educate the next generation so it's you know find the next generation of innovators engineers it, it kind of affects everything around us once once we go down that if we stay on this path it affects everything it affects everything even though they say the world is overpopulated well the world is not <laughs> overpopulated by many places uh, there was an article in the Times yesterday mm -hmm. 
that Italy is becoming extremely old. There are almost no children at all. Almost no children at all. Uh, there's certainly enough room for all of us. Definitely. Certainly enough room for all of us. Um, so we have to see what happens now in the future. The, the focus, the focus of the pro-life movement is no longer on the Supreme Court. Thank God. It's now on all these states. A lot of states are passing restrictive abortion laws um, with a lot of opposition. We have to see what happens. But of course, the, the, the only focus of the pro-life movement is not the laws. Mm -hmm. It's also the hearts of people. Yes. The hearts of people and the understanding of the importance of every life mm -hmm. and the protection of human life. Mm -hmm. um, certainly in my life, I want to be on the side that protects life. Yes. 